What is happening guys? Welcome back, and with Genichiro dead, the first thing we're gonna do before the next boss, head back over here to Ashina Outskirts. I wanna point out our man here. Anyway, he's happy that he's here with Aniyama. Uh, he thinks they're stripping armor to give burials to the dead. Obviously, that's that's not the case. Aniyama is just stripping them for uh, for for weapons to sell, but you know it's it's okay. Uh, anyway, big thing now is pellets, infinite Akko sugar, five Gokens, two Yashiriku ceramic shards, ash, coin purses, the Phantom Kunai, scrap iron, scrap magnetite, black gunpowder, yellow gunpowder, and lump of fat wax. Ooh, that's a lot of stuff. So yeah, really nice to see uh, all the loot that we have from him. Now for the hardest boss in the game for me. Made a jump. <laughs> yes, I did it! Okay, so now that we have gotten the discussion about the Mortal Blade, a new boss opens on up. Head back to the main hall. Notice our guy is gone, and instead there is a bell. This is honestly my favorite boss fight. Really cool. See no evil, speak no evil, hear no evil, the last panel is do no evil. <laughs> so, we now have the elusive hall bell, I would suggest putting this on. Uh, and this is a bit of a gimmick fight, but honestly, this is probably one of the most entertaining gimmick fights I think I've ever seen in a game. Um, so the main gist here is we need to catch the monkeys. We need to catch them, you need to actually kill them. So this guy, he'll give us a little bit of dialogue on each monkey. Another who's lost in the halls of illusion, I believe you're on a mission. The purple monkey is the seeing monkey. Excellent eyesight, can see great distances, very attentive. If he spots you, he'll run immediately. Exceedingly timid. The orange monkey is the speaking monkey. Doesn't have good eyesight or hearing, but he'll make a big fuss causing the other monkeys to run if he sees you. Last one, the green monkey is the hearing monkey. Excellent hearing, can hear across great distances, and is very attentive. He'll run away the moment he hears you coming, making it hard to approach. So the idea here is we need to chase down these monkeys, but we can lure them into certain areas. Uh, the last monkey follows you around, and he's invisible. But so, just for example, this area right here, it's a waterfall. See right here, if you go here. Noise of the roaring waterfall is deafening. Surely no one would hear anything else in here. One thing which I didn't try in the walkthrough prep, I want to see if the uh, firecracker will uh, mess up the hearing monkey. But so you can lure him here to take him out. You're the one following me is messing with me. This room I never fear or figured out if there was a purpose to it. I didn't see any paper posted and it just seems like it's an empty room. Going up. This room. Uh, this one's actually the same. Where's the one I'm looking for? Where's the dark room? There's the dark room. Right here you'll notice that you can see plenty here, but up top, nice and dark. So this is one of the places that you can uh, lure the purple monkey. As you can see, below is an abyss, the bottom cannot be seen, above is darkness, nothing can be seen. So, luring purple monkey here will work out really well. 
Uh, additionally, for Green Monkey, there's a big bell you can ring right here, so you can use that to get him to, to stop. Purple Monkey's always over here. But what we're going to do... A bare flame in the wind. When it goes out, this place becomes as dark as night. So go ahead and pop this. It'll make this area... It'll basically blow out the candles so that this area is dark, making it easier to kill the purple monkey. Now, as you begin to kill the monkeys, uh, ghost monkeys will spawn. The ghost monkeys can actually... Um, there we go. Got him. Uh, the ghost monkeys can inflict terror on you, and if it builds up enough, it can kill you. You can kill them very easily, though, so they're not really a giant concern, but it is worth mentioning. So I like to take out the invisible one first, just because that way it's um you know it's less distracting hearing that one. They want to find a uh, orangey bro. Try out the firecracker thing. I don't think they work, but it's one of those things where I'm like I gotta you know. That does not seem like it. Thing here. Bell is deafening it. Ringing it relentlessly will also make your ears ring. So we're going to go ahead. Okay. Ringing that just deafened him up for a second, allowing us to get a quick kill on him. Uh, and now we're going to ring the bell. And what ringing the bell does is it'll reset all the monkeys back to their base position. You can see these two are turned around because we found them. First thing we're going to do now is go get the orange monkey. I usually recommend getting uh, orange bro first, but in this case, green one just kind of came straight to us. And that's the reason that this fight can be a little bit tricky is, you know, sometimes the, it's it's really easy. Um, I was watching my buddy play and <laughs> the, the, the invisible monkey literally like fell into his lap. Here's the fear monkeys. Where'd you just go? I just saw Orange Boy run past. Anyway, we're gonna go and get this guy. Now that this room is darkened. Poor guy. Can't even see. Now all we gotta do is get the orange one. And you can see they leave footprints behind. There he is. with three monkeys dead, there's now three spirit monkeys chasing us. Can't damage them until you get close, sadly, so... Uh, you can either... Oh my, oh my god, too many monkeys. It's time for one of these. Up that. Set the spirit monkeys. He's kind of following the same damn path, but... Oh, I just barely missed him. I'm going to try sneaking up behind him. See if I can catch him right here. Because there's, unfortunately, there's no way to corral the orange monkey. Um, you know, the other ones, for example, you can... Oh my god. Gone. I've never actually had to pop one of these. But, uh... Monkeys, man, they are... Whew. Ooh, coming on to me. Where are you at, you little shit? 
So this is why ideally I like to save purple for last, because these monkeys will just keep building up. But and the purple one, as you saw, was easy to kill, but orange just didn't wanna not wanna die. Oh, god damn it. Running out of places to go, monkey. Oh, yes, get, get, no, no, you little shit. Gotcha. Anyway, with the last monkey down, oh my god. 12 minutes into the episode, chasing that little shit around. Now we have the ninjutsu up a tier, which personally is my favorite ninjutsu. I haven't even used blood smoke, so I'm gonna, I promised myself I would try blood smoke out. A puppeteer ninjutsu is just so freaking good. But anyway, enhance attack power with the monkey stead. Just another quick upgrade right after Genichiro before we hit up the next area. Why do you seek this place? I need the mortal blade. You know it cannot be drawn. So code far, because no one that's ever drawn it has survived. You still want to attempt it? I do. Well, Mortal Blade! 
So even though you can't actually like use it, use it in place of your katana, uh, the Mortal Blade allows us to take out enemies that are otherwise immortal. Anyway, talk to her for a bit. And she sees you serve the Divine Heir. Why do you seek it? We want to sever immortality. The Divine Heir begrudges the power of the heritage. What a strange fate. I'm the one children left that survived the waters. Blah, blah, blah. Anyway, she gives us some rice. Now, the rice is important. Anytime you use the rice and some time passes, whether by resting or killing enemies, whatever the case is, you can come back to her and she'll give you some more rice. You want to keep doing this over and over and over just to build up more rapport with her and eventually she'll give you some rice for uh, for Kuro and after she gives you some rice for Kuro she'll go you know what I want to help you guys I want to help sever the immortality and that is how you get access to what's essentially the secret ending of the game so long story short the point here is use the damn rice which, honestly, the rice is, is pretty nice. Um, you can also give it to those crazy old ladies that were begging for rice. But essentially, it's like a pellet on steroids. So, nice to use. Anyway, we can... Uh, should not be the Divine Air. You're welcome here. Uh, give her this holy chapter. I was told to give it to you. I'll accept. I still detest them. Uh, you can't get any more rice from her yet. So, basically, instead of talking to advance her dialogue, the big thing here is we're going to be uh, giving her rice. And I know that this area looks kind of big. Um, it's a neat looking area, but there's actually no items here, which which threw me for a loop the first time as well. Never mind, I lied. This was not in my notes. Wait, was it in my notes? So did she one of the things mortal blade reusable but no, huh? Wait, green. Damn it, yep, after monkeys grab pellet behind the temple, hit the shrine, get blade, talk to her for rice. Son of a bitch. See this is what I get. I'm just going so fast I'm not even reading my own damn notes. I gotta slow it down. Should I have more spacing in my notes? That would probably help. But anyway, this is the shortcut in the main temple that we couldn't open earlier. But now that we have the mortal blade, you can kill these things. And then when they're on the ground... Mortal blade! Oof. So they're not particularly good for farming, but point is, you can now kill them. Uh, so anyway, another thing worth mentioning now, if you go back to the dilapidated temple, and this is very much going to be a on your own time sort of thing, because, you know, you may, uh, you may still want this guy, but if you go and you talk to training bro, now that we have mortal blade, Sokomoto. I'm on the mortal blade, it's real, you don't suppose you could end it to end my curse, you can either accept or tell him you don't wish to kill him. If you accept, he says, thank you. you grant a merciful death. Leave it to me. I'll prepare for the beyond next time I see you. Blah, blah, blah. Um, but the thing is, once you start that dialogue, the training opportunities are gone. Uh, killing him will get you a reusable uh, bite down. That you can just, you know, use whenever you want. So kind of useful. Uh, but at the same time, you know, you're obviously losing access to training bro. So anyway, uh, from here, we are going to travel back to Ashina Castle, to the Great Serpent Shrine. Let's see, the Tengu of Ashina is here. Oh boy, my skills. How much? Let's see what I have, because we want to have at least one master skill. Talk to him. I have to get Ashina Cross. Actually, we're going to do that real fast, just to show his thing. Um, let me travel. We're going to do our Sempo run real fast. Uh, so basically, if you have Master Skills available, if you have at least one, he will give you another set of skills. Um, on that note, when you get the Mortal Blade, we now have Mortal Draw, which is pretty cool. So I'll be uh, showing off both of that. And I also want to check out this Mist thing. I've never actually used the Mist. Oh, it's already a wasted effort. Oh, oh, oh god. It's okay. We're just here to get some quick XP. Essentially, just do that and then just keep killing people while they're stuck in the mist. That's neat. Which 
Should take one, maybe two runs, but I want to get five points here to keep up Ashin across to show you what dude has to offer for us. Mortal draw! Pretty dope, right? Actually pretty decent for uh, for damage as well. Come on. Mortal draw! Murder everything. to the last idol, and as soon as we get our fifth point, we're heading back out. Actually, just to make sure, hang on, I might... No, yeah, Ashina Cross is unlocked. Just to confirm, I'm not doing pointless farming right now. Yes, okay, I can get it. I just need, uh, need the point. quick little run. Especially because we're getting like a nice, seeing a nice visible chunk of the bar increase every time we kill one. Mortal it also has a follow-up attack as you saw there. Pretty neat stuff. Uh, so anyway, head back to the idol, pick up your skill, and then we're shooting back over to the guy. <clears throat> and it doesn't have to be Ashina Cross, um, just to reiterate, any any master skill that you have. So just to, to take a look at what I'm talking about exactly, at the end of the tier, Shadow Rush is considered a master skill. Uh, right here, this is a master skill. Ashina Cross is a master skill, and then this one is a master skill. But so if you have a master skill, now travel back to Great Serpent Shrine. Talk to him again. Uh, Sekiro. Ministry rats. They find a way. There's always more to kill. By the way, have you mastered any secret techniques? Yes, I have. You really have a knack for killing. Here's your reward. Mushin Esoteric Text. Let's go. So anyway, now that we have the motion skills, the motion skills are like your your big dick skills. Every single motion skill requires two other skills. So for example, this one requires you to have both Shadowfall and the Temple Art, and it's a combination of Shadowfall with the Kung Fu from the Temple Art. Uh, this one requires you to have both Ashina Cross as well as Shadow Rush, and this one requires you to have both Ashina Cross and the one in the ninjutsu tools. Personally, I really like Imported, uh, Empowered Mortal Draw. I think it's just really, really dope. Um, so that's what we're going to be working towards. But you'll want to go ahead and get that. We're going to... Oh, man, for a second, that was like, not like this. Uh, anyway, so leap across. Down. Here we are at our idol. Ready to start, Sculptors, or excuse me, Sunken Valley. So, uh, we're going to wrap this one up here. Uh, truth be told, I figured those monkeys were not going to take that long. I expected, uh, you know, the monkeys are usually fast, but every now and then one of them's a little bastard. But anyway, uh, just to give you guys an expectation, so the next episode more than likely will knock out uh, Sunken Valley, potentially Sunken Valley and the Gun Fort as well. Uh, and then moving on from there, we're going to do 
Riven Cave and a bit of Bots Vita Valley. We may even take on Guardian Ape. Uh, and then from there, the last area we're going to be going is Ashina Depths. Before we make our way towards the, uh, well, I guess towards the first ending of the game. So anyway, stay tuned. Plenty more to come, but I'll see you guys soon.